there's a lot of really, really high quality research labs across Europe and across the world. And it gives you an opportunity to go in to these research labs and to learn their techniques and to bring them home and try to apply them in your own research environment. You have the freedom to follow your interest and innovate on it. You have the sky as a limit because you are working on something that it's not work anymore. It's your motivation, it's your life goal or something. So it's really good. And you have the chance to make a world a better place. It's something that keeps, I hope, keeps you fresh. Um, it means that you have to stay on your toes academically. Well, one of the main advantages of being a mobile researcher is international recognition of your work. Um, because, let's face it, researchers are not in this for the money. One of the biggest changes I've seen over my career is how much easier it is to be a, a mobile researcher. I, I recall an instance, instance in the 1980s when it would all phone calls had to go through an operator and to receive a fax would take two to three days for a piece of information. In contrast, just last week, I was on a teleconference with people from six countries. We could all see each other and looking at the same piece of information. There's been a, a, a sea change, if you will, in, in our ability to communicate and that keeps us more connected. And also social media, whatever you can use, Facebook or, or other things, also gives another um, ability to stay in touch with your family and with friends. The development of the internet, um, online banking and all that kind of thing has enormously helped mobility, I would think. Um, if I think about going back to the 1970s when I moved to London and how, I mean, I was a student so it wasn't a big deal, but how would one have been able to do what I do now, today, in 2013? How would that have been possible in 1976? I don't frankly know how it would have been. I, I'm sure people did it, but it was just different. One of the challenges of having a, a relatively mobile career has been the uprooting and moving the family from one location to, to another. When the children were young, it was fun and exciting. It became more difficult as, as school and moving through schools. And now, as at a more advanced stage in the career, the problem's harder on me because I'm separated from my family. We found that the school in, uh, in Leicester in, in, um, in England was quite welcoming. They'd never seen Canadian students before, so the kids were celebrities. Um, it, uh, it provided them with, um, with challenges because they were leaving all their friends behind. One of the main challenges for me personally is that there is a war happening in my home country, Syria. And uh, I, am, I, am all, I am always worried about what's happening, especially that my family is still there. Um, hopefully, like, things will turn out good in the end. As a researcher moving within Europe, there wasn't uh, any obstacles from the point of view of um, visas, as it's an open zone and we can move freely within the country to carry out research. However, there was a challenge from a point of view of I moved with my partner and she did find it difficult to find work, so that was a difficulty. So the main disadvantage for me personally um, moving to the US was the fact that I left my fiance and you know, obviously my family behind. Um, at the time, there was kind of visa issues. We weren't married, so they won't allow him to come with me. So um, I've spoken to the European Commission about that and they're looking into something, a change in that, let's say. I like to stabilize a family with my husband in one country and get the residency. But for the future grant that I would like to get from the Mercury, I have to travel, I have to be mobile, and I will miss the opportunity to get a residency in one country. The pension schemes are different from country to country, and that's, different for, that's difficult for a researcher at the end to combine and, and um, be certain that he will be well provided at the end. You might have costs for, for, for double living. Uh, that might internally lead to that you have whatever additional cars. Uh, you might, of course, need to travel between those two places, uh, depending on the distance, of course, but I need to fly, uh, obviously, from Ireland to Sweden. There's also the logistical things of what do you do with your property back home? Uh, who's in your house or your flat or whatever? Do you give it up? Um, what do you do with your car? Um, <laughs> 
I decided to be a, a researcher when I was 32, and some of the grants I had to apply for had an age, upper age limit, so it was difficult for me to access those uh, grant opportunities. The grants are difficult to get, and you have to have a certain caliber you know, in your research area to apply for the grants. So you have to have a certain H-index, so you have to have certain publications, you know, citations. And without the grants, you can't really achieve that. Um, so it's a catch-22, really. It's quite difficult to find uh, a job in Western Europe because of uh, some sort of bias uh, against uh, researchers, from, uh, researchers from Eastern Europe. One of the major impacts from moving from industry over here to academia uh, has been uh, the contract situation. Uh, so instead of being on an indefinite uh, contract that I was with Ericsson, uh, now I am on a contract that is subject to further funding after this year. And that definitely is a risk, both for myself and of course also in a wider context for my family. in our uh, Irish consulate in Ukraine. A term for visa preparation officially was started as uh, at two months. It was an extremely huge period. However, after the contacting of uh, Euro Access ag Agency, I, uh, this uh, period was sub substantially truncated to two weeks, and I have received my visa in two weeks, so it was some sort of miracle, I suppose. When I moved here for first two years, most probably until now, I still don't know what should the situation be with health issues. So should I have insurance? Is this needed? Is it superfluous? So people tell you to go to the Euraxis or other websites, but the websites tend to link to other websites, which link to other websites, and you do not really get most of the answers clearly in a way that you can understand them. The Euraxis people were, um, were extremely helpful and, and I suspect, I don't know if I would be here in Dublin today if I hadn't had contact with them. I did not know that the job that I'm currently in, which is growing plants in space, even existed when I started my career path. I actually don't think I have a long-term career strategy. I'm a bit more haphazard. I have to say I very rarely plan out things that far in advance. You know, I, if so, I knew I wanted to do research. A PhD opportunity in Cambridge was available. It seemed like a good idea. I could get to play cricket at the same time. So why not? There is a danger, without a doubt, that as you get into the senior ranks, um, you're not looking for challenges um, the way you are when you're younger for a whole bunch of reasons that are related to career. You're, you've established yourself, you've established your reputation, and you may not feel that you have to do much more. Um, I think that's a mistake. At the moment, being a researcher in Spain is very difficult. The funding that they get is very little. So if you want to develop as a researcher, you have to consider moving to another country. In the next couple of months, I'll be finishing my PhD. So I'm definitely looking for a job. So if there's anyone out there who's willing to give me a job, contact me. <laughs>